Hey everybody, welcome to the 17th episode of Ask Brixie, where I answer your questions from the comments section below. If you want your questions to be potentially answered in the next episode, well make sure you submit them down below. Now in the last episode, somebody asked me, do you craggle your Lego? Like, do you glue your Lego together? And I sarcastically said, yes, everything is glued together. And like a third of the comments from the last video were like, really? You glue your Lego? No, I was, I was sarcastic, okay? I don't actually glue my Lego. However, I might glue some Lego here in my Lego city, specifically the traffic lights. So there are some older pieces that are included in this build here. And sometimes you can see them just sort of hanging out or dangling at a weird angle because the clutch power in some of the pieces is pretty much gone. So I might glue some of the points of attachment within my traffic lights just to make sure that they're all standing upright and look perfect at all times. I just think that would be hugely beneficial for the Lego city because going around and fixing them all the time is sort of annoying. And if I could solve that problem with a simple dab of glue, why not do it? So I have the questions on my phone here. That's why I'm staring at my phone. Recently, I finished building Ninjago City Markets and I integrated it onto the shelving up there. It looks pretty good. SWBrick75 asks, I was curious why you don't build any modular type building on mills plate initially rather than having to transfer it later, especially the Ninjago City sets with all of the plates and tiles making up the water. Also, could you do a video showing this set together with the other three? So the reason I don't mills plate these specific buildings is because the water on them is actually built using one plate and one tile. And that's how all of the water in my Lego city, such as the ocean water and also the creek water, it's all one plate and one tile tall, which matches Ninjago City. So if I ever place these sets in the Lego city, they don't have to be mills plated because they essentially already are. The actual structure comes out of the water at a mills plate height and then the water itself matches the rest of the water in the Lego city. But any other time I always make sure that I build modular buildings on a pre-made mills plate such as the construction site, the Studgate train station, the jazz club. Those were recently integrated and I made sure to pre-build the mills plate. Uh, when I originally switched over to mills, well that was a nightmare because I had to change so many modular buildings. And I don't want to be doing that more than I have to because it took a long time. So as of late, I've been working really hard on my new amusement park layout and I'm really liking the direction that it's heading. In recent videos about the amusement park layout, there's been a lot of comments in regards to suggestions for the layout. For example, John says, maybe a crazy idea, have you considered removing the Studgate station and switching it back to the old Disney station so the weird sizes stop being an issue and it also fits better aesthetically with the theme park layout. Then he continues to say, I know it's a beautiful building, but maybe it would look better in a larger layout, for example, when you have the warehouse, which we're gonna talk about later in this video as well. And then 77 people gave that comment a thumbs up. In that same video, Pika Power says, I know he never will do it, but the train station should go. I feel like if it goes, the amusement park will have more room. Plus, I don't think a train station like that belongs in an amusement park. And 104 people gave that comment a thumbs up. And then there was a bunch of other comments saying, ah, you should get rid of that train station or just get rid of the trains altogether, specifically the line that goes around the amusement park. But you know what? I like my Lego trains and I like the fact that they can go around the amusement park. I just think they add a lot of motion to the city and just a lot of life. And I always fire them up. I feel like they're just super cool to have. And I have them like available. I just don't think putting them away in storage is the best solution because I enjoy them. And I built these train tunnels that cover up that raised platform. And I just love the fact that it looks so good. And this is the most complete the train system has ever been. All the lines are ballast. And once again, there's those platform coverings that have the tunnels built in. And I think this train station here is absolutely gorgeous. So that's why I wanna keep it here in the amusement park. I have spent countless hours working on this ballast train line and integrating this huge train station into the city. So I don't really wanna put it away in storage just because I've worked so hard to get it properly integrated here in the city. And I understand that it is a big building and it is sort of awkward where it sits right now. 
but I like it. It looks really good. I really don't mind this layout of the amusement park. I love the direction that it's heading. I think everything has enough space that it can be presented. And the new Double Disney Castle, and once I do the landscaping around the Double Disney Castle, it's just the icing on the cake. So I don't mean to be harsh or anything, but after I've worked so hard on creating this layout and I've literally spent a week of my life working on it and developing it and, and thinking about it, it just sometimes, although I know they're positive comments, it sort of hurts to read 20 or 30 comments with hundreds of thumbs up in some cases, suggesting that I completely undo everything that I've worked so hard to do. So yeah, it just sort of hurts sometimes because you read these comments and it's just a psychological burden. It's like, oh man, I just spent a week properly integrating this train station and there's over a hundred people that think I need to get rid of it out of my Lego city or maybe a hundred people or over a hundred people that don't approve of my amusement park layout. But you know what? I like the trains going around here and I really like that train station. I don't think I want to put that away in storage. I just like it and it's a new addition to the Lego city that I really enjoy. With that said, I always open up the floor to comments. I always say, let me know what you think by commenting below. So I can't really say things like that too harshly. You know what I mean? Uh, Rockies1790 says, ditch the amusement park, problem solved, next. Things like that hurt when 45 people, you know, give it a thumbs up. Because like, I stayed in the video that I love the direction that it's heading and I love trains and I love my amusement park and I can't wait to get this layout done and then I showcase the fact that I'm working so hard on it and then somebody says, get rid of it. It's just like, how about no? <laughs> That's just what I want to say, but I can't say it. Well, I guess I just did. But no, we're going to keep the amusement park how it is and we're going to keep the trains as well because I think it deserves a thumbs up. Counter Production says, I think you should put the Disney castle on the raised platform, removing part of the wall shelving to accommodate it. I just built this double Disney castle and I'm excited about integrating it into some water in the middle of the park. So I'm gonna run with that. However, it would be pretty cool putting it on the raised platform. However, then I would have to remove the shelving like you suggested, and then it would be way up there and honestly, I think it's too big and too deep to go on the raised platform at this point. Oh yeah, and recently the LEGO group sent me this set here, so I'm actually gonna be putting that on the raised platform next to the medieval blacksmith on a custom plate. However, if I were to get rid of the Abusa Park, I would be able to add some new areas. Dennis asks, what area would you want to include in your LEGO city, except for Castle? Well, those Ninjago city sets up on the wall over there I would love to integrate those into the Lego city. That would be really neat. And I probably have the parts to do it. Also a Western area would be pretty cool as well. However, that would require a lot of pieces. And I think I'm gonna stick with the amusement park right now because I think it's pretty awesome. <laughs> but having the Ninjago back in the city would be my ultimate goal. Like I've mentioned before, I would be able to just switch out some modular buildings, about eight of them. Just put those on the shelves if I wanted to integrate Ninjago back into the city. And I could potentially do that one day. Pretty cool idea. I don't know if I'm going to do it soon, but maybe, maybe uh, Ninjago will be back in the city. Harrison asks, if there was to be a new Disney park attraction set, what set would you want personally for me? It would be the monorail. That would be sick. I would love for Lego just to come back out with monorails in general. However, with that said, I've worked really hard on integrating a raised train line that looks pretty good using RC train and RC track. I didn't buy any monorails. I decided to go with that because I have so many RC trains and I wanted them, or I wanted to use them in the city. A monorail would be epic though. That's what they should do. I'm trying to think of another ride that they could do or some sort of attraction, but I can't really, Maybe like Big Thunder, that would be neat, right? Yeah, that's gonna be my answer. Big Thunder, that would be super cool. Lando asks, what is your dream Marvel set? Well, they've already done a couple of them, but they didn't do them good enough. And that is, of course, the Avengers Tower. I would love for them to come out with a massive Avengers Tower, similar to what they did with the Daily Bugle. They need to come out with an impressive Avengers Tower. And if they do that, I will be removing my Avengers Tower from the LEGO City. It needs to be reworked anyway. And I'll probably use the parts from that to create the Fantastic Four Baxter building. I think that would be super cool 
And it was actually Tanjam that gave me that idea. I was like, yeah, I think I'll build a police station. And he's like, dude, you got to build the Baxter building. I was like, that is a great idea. And you know what? If they come out with a huge Avengers Tower, maybe I'll buy a couple of them, just like I did with the Daily Bugle, and double its size. Alexander asks, what do you think will happen when you finish your Lego city? That's a good question. I'll probably, uh, don't mark my words on this, but I'd probably look to add some lights to the modular buildings. Or what I'd like to do is start switching out some of these generic like Lego set modular buildings with custom uh, modular buildings. So start building my own. I think I've always wanted to do that. Just never really got around to learning how to use a digital designing software, which would be hugely beneficial for parts ordering. So I think if I were to finish my Lego city, I might look into lighting or I might start building custom modular buildings. That's what I really want to do. And then these modular buildings would go on track shelving around the Lego city. Another thing I would look to do is what Charlie asked about. He says, do you think in the future you will ever convert to brick built roads? That's another thing that I would do if I ever completed my Lego city is maybe convert to brick built roads. So these roads here are built using just the road plates and then there's some brick built style stuff on the edge of the road for the parking stalls that you see throughout the Lego city and also for the parking lots as well. Brick built roads are super cool because A, you can put the yellow line rather than the white line created with the two by four tiles and you're just able to customize everything. So the stopping lines and just pretty much anything. It's definitely the way to go, but it's very part intensive and therefore very expensive. But maybe if I finish my Lego City, Charlie, I would convert to custom brick built roads slowly. <laughs> maybe do one section at a time. All right, so a while back, I presented the idea that I might be looking for a larger space. I might move this Lego room into some sort of like commercial space, like a warehouse or something like that. And I still want to do that. That's still the plan. And in the last Ask Brixie episode, there were a lot of people asking me, what's the deal with that? Like, is there a timeline? Uh, what would you do to generate extra sources of revenue if you did acquire this property? Uh, is it actually realistic? And what would you do with all of the space? Would you build certain dioramas and all that? So I want to talk a little bit about the warehouse I've talked about it in previous videos, but I never actually put it in the title and in the thumbnail like I did today. So I just want to give you guys a little bit of an update uh, in regards to that extra space. So at this particular point, I am still, hey, you're probably sound like a broken record here. I'm still waiting for my 2022 taxes to be done and approved. And once those are done, then I'm going to be able to apply to the bank. And then once they approve me, I'll be able to potentially get a mortgage or whatever it is to purchase a commercial property for the business. At this point, I already have my down payment ready to go. And I also have a budget for renovations as well. So financially, I'm ready to go. It's just a matter of whether or not the bank wants to approve me uh, for that mortgage, which I'm like positive they will. I don't see why they wouldn't. It'd be bizarre if they didn't, in my opinion. And uh, then once we get that space, of course, we're going to be working on more dioramas. I actually talked about it recently. Like, I was like, oh, maybe I should get rid of some of the shelving and stuff and get rid of these Technic cars and get rid of some of these LEGO Create Expert cars and put a table right here. And this table should become a diorama, like a Star Wars diorama. Maybe it's Hoth or Dagobah or Endor with like the trees and the bunker and the Ewoks and the ATST walkers and like do really neat stuff like that. And I really want to do things like that. Uh, I would also like to make dioramas for medieval. I've already sort of built a miniature medieval area up there, right? I would like to expand that. I'd like to expand my Christmas winter village. I would also like to expand maybe the airstrip and the runway, like the airport. And then of course, a more spaced out amusement park, a bigger farm, maybe a bigger zoo, well, maybe a bigger, uh, probably not beach, like that's already big enough. Downtown core is already pretty big and I wanna get into more custom stuff. But yeah, I would for sure be down to 
do different dioramas and just expand more on what we already have, you know, have like a properly integrated Ninjago area, have bigger and better mountains, have a Western area, have all this different stuff. It's really just a time thing, just like getting approved, moving to the new space, building the tables for these things, acquiring the parts, coming up with the ideas, getting the time to actually build these massive things and these, the, all these different ideas that I have. So it's not really a project that I can just turn around and get done in a year. It's just a matter of doing things. Like it has taken me since 2015 to get to here. So this has taken me eight years. This room, all the Lego sets in it, and this city has taken me eight years. I would say that getting a warehouse and fully developing it with dioramas and everything is gonna probably take as long as that. Granted, this is my full-time job now, so it's a full-time effort. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much like ready to go. The thing is, is it's really time is of the essence because in a previous update, I said, oh, I don't really wanna be moving during winter, but thinking of it from a business point of view for me as a YouTube creator, honestly, the best time to do it would probably be August, September. So it really depends on how fast or how long the process is of me getting approved and actually committing and purchasing a place. I don't know how long that's actually gonna take, but it would be best to move in August and September because A, it's not freezing cold out, and B, we're going into the holidays. October, November, December are the best months on YouTube, period. So if I get approved for January or February or March where it is treacherous on YouTube, like it's way harder to make a living on YouTube during those months, that would make it difficult to transition into the move from a financial perspective. Would I do other things to uh, help supplement the, like generate more revenue uh, when I move into the warehouse, absolutely, I would have to. There'd have to be better videos. There would have to be more videos. There'd have to be maybe some more live streams, maybe start doing something on Twitch, probably a bigger retail presence online, whether it be like on Bricklink or on whatnot, um, potentially opening up a studio for uh, like, like having people come in on weekends or something like that, maybe a little retail store in there, maybe like a, vending machine or some, some things in there that sort of generate a little extra revenue and help with the additional expenses that would be occurred by doing that because there would be some massive expenses like from a monthly perspective that would be added to my monthly budget. The mortgage, the taxes, like the property taxes are huge. Uh, the insurance, the security, the additional utilities and much, much more. I'm, I'm drawing a blank because I've been talking for so long, but I would have to find a way to make it justifiable, right? I'd have to find a way to make sure that it is sustainable and economical for me to make a move like that because I would hate for it to be a burden which doesn't you know, help the business grow. Do I want to do it because I'm passionate about Lego and I need more space for Lego and I want to build more epic dioramas like I've been doing? Yes, that is the main reason why I want to do it. Dioramas and more stuff. I don't want it to display more sets. I want it to build more cool stuff and have a better Lego city. It's, I don't need to display another Ferrari Daytona SB3. Like I don't need more space for this, right? I, I need more space for epic dioramas. Well, everybody, that wraps up Ask Brixie episode 17. If you have some questions that want to be, or that you want answered in Ask Brixie episode 18, once again, make sure you throw them down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for coming on by. Remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for some more great stuff and farewell.